Um, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this afternoon's meeting of the Randwick Local Planning Panel. Uh, Lindsay Fletcher is my name, and I'm the chair of the panel this afternoon. With me on my far right is Jan Morell, and on my left, Deborah Laidlaw, who are the expert members of the panel, and on my immediate right, Sarah Kelly, the community member on the panel. Um, I'd like to acknowledge that we are meeting on the land of the Bidjigal and Gadigal people who occupied the Sydney coast, being the traditional owners. And on behalf of the panel, I acknowledge and pay my respects to the elders past and present and the Aboriginal people in attendance today. Sorry about that echo. Um, prior to the commencement of the meeting, all panel members were required to sign a declaration of interest um, or, uh, in relation to each of the matters on the agenda. And I can confirm that all of those declarations have been received. Um, I can also confirm that Sarah Kelly, the community member, has declared a non-pecuniary, a non-significant interest in the application at 252 to 254 Maroubra Road, Maroubra. Um, given that it's an interest that's non-pecuniary and non-significant, it doesn't actually require under the guidelines any further action. Um, but Sarah's indicated to me that she will, in fact, vacate the meeting during discussion on that item and won't partake in the determination. Um, the signed declarations of interest will be available to view through Council's website by tomorrow afternoon. Having said that, do any panel members have any further matters to declare? No. 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 And nor do I. Um, we have six people registered to address the panel this afternoon. Um, registered speakers for each item will be heard in the order of uh, objectors first and followed by the applicant. Each speaker will be given three minutes to address the panel. Um, and if I consider it appropriate, an extension of one minute may be granted upon request. However, no further extension will be granted. The panel's been provided with copies of all the submissions received in response to public exhibition of the applications. And therefore, for those addressing the panel, there's no need for speakers to repeat all of the points that were made in those submissions. Um, speakers should focus on the key matters they wished us to understand and consider, including any suggestions about how their concerns could be resolved. That echoes really annoying. <laughs> um, uh, the applicant, of course, may wish to um, comment on issues raised in the council report, provide a response to any proposed conditions and, of course, address any issues that may be raised by objectors um, during the meeting. After the speaker has addressed the panel, panel members may ask each speaker questions to clarify any matters. Um, and only registered speakers will be allowed to speak and respond to questions from the stand. Any person using defamatory or offensive language may be asked to leave the meeting or the meeting may be adjourned. Um, an audio recording is being made of this meeting and we ask that speakers use the microphone on the stand when addressing the panel to ensure that their comments are recorded. The audio recording will be available through Council's website by tomorrow afternoon. Um, can I ask, by the way, that anybody turn off mobile phones or put them on silent? After all registered speakers have been heard, the panel will move to another room to deliberate and vote on each matter, um, and the meeting will be closed at that point. So we move to the address. Um, the first application... <laughs> Yeah, the first application is uh, D65 of 19 for 23 Melrose Parade, Clovelly. Um, we have one objector registered, <coughs> Mr Phil Allen. Mr Allen. Um, thank you, panel, for the opportunity to be able to address uh, this. Um, look, as far as this uh, development application goes from next door, uh, we actually don't really have any significant objections to it. I think it's actually a good development application. Um, except the pergola that's actually between the building and the footpath as planned. Um, currently, uh, we actually enjoy substantial views from uh, the, this position across to Clovelly Bay, and actually that the pergola would actually impact, as you can see by the defined red line, uh, such that we would actually lose the uh, views across the Clovelly Bay, so we're concerned 
about that, and uh, we address that in our submission. Um, so the, uh, apart from our loss of views, we actually think that in terms of the streetscape, this would actually create a very large visual and there'll be a green wall uh, from the walkway. And uh, we've been concerned about precedents that it sets for other buildings. As we've seen, precedents been set on previous development applications being approved, uh, leading to compromised streetscapes. Um, we actually would, we have a very strong objection to the the goal and we'd really like that taken into consideration and actually commend the recommendation that the town planner has made um, on this uh, DA. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Any questions from panel members? Um, I, I have one question and that is to uh, distinguish between the pergola over the walkway from that over the driveway. Um, your image there I guess focused on the outer edge would be, which is the section yes. over the driveway. Do you have a s similar concern or the same concern with the more immediate area the, adjacent to the walkway? The town planner mentioned uh, that having a pergola that was behind the, the front building line uh, co as a coverway towards the entrance, and I think it's a very sensible suggestion because it provides an area for cover for them, and so I think that's very appropriate for the, uh, the development next door. Okay, thank you. Nothing further arising from that. Sorry. Sorry, Mr. Allen, if I could just ask you. Um, so your garage, the view from the garage, that was just a garage roof as I understand it. Um, that is, a, that's always been ever since we moved into the property, um, as was confirmed by the building certificate, an accessible area where we're able to enjoy the views and that's what we have been doing over the years. And do you enjoy views from other parts of the dwelling or the other parts of the uh, yard? The front part of the front the Sorry? Front, um, at the front area of the property, we don't have any other, we don't have views down to the uh, Clearly Bay because it's actually blocked um, from that position. So they are the only views that we can enjoy of Clearly Bay from the top of that garage. Mm -hmm. okay. um, our rear views have also been, <coughs> by development applications, been blocked, but I'm sure our neighbours are aware of those. Right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the, the next speaker on the same item is Ms Yvette Middleton, I think, representing the applicant. the opportunity. My name is Yvette Middleton. I'm from GSA Planning and I represent the uh, strata owners for, of the property. First of all, we're mighty grateful for an approval. Um, it's a very interesting scheme, but unfortunately the conditions have somewhat diluted the effect that was attempted to be achieved. So you can see at the moment um, it's quite vertical. There's a lot of structure shown. Um, red brick, which is possibly not as attractive now as it was then, um, whereas the proposal aims to provide a visual base for the building and horizontal bands uh, at the window level. I'll just uh, direct you to note the uh, brickwork in between here because I think that's important as part of the scheme to understand that. You can see also that the existing building has virtually no greenery in the front garden, well, front yard, because it's dominated by um, a concrete driveway. Also, the, the parking area is not as attractive as it could be. Um, so the timber screening below the building, which then forms a gate, would be aimed at hiding some of that, pro providing some security, and just also making the building a little bit more contemporary. So th there we have the existing, and you can see the the various structure things, it's slightly unbalanced with the cantilever. This was the proposal as lodged and you can see that there is the screening on the left which is basically plants trained up wires. On the right is the entry to the dwelling and behind is the um, timber screen. So, 
and you can also start to see the quite uh, the greater horizontal emphasis provided by those window screens and frames. But there's a little bit more detail later on. An option, um, given the concern of the um, assessing officer, would be to remove the planting and wiring and just keep the frame as just an open frame, which retains the effect of the base but without providing any bulk. And it is quite a lightweight structure, really. Um, some, let me just use this. At, th at this point, can still be uh, some planting on wires. This planting here provides a nice break between the pedestrian entry and the driveway entry, and this forms part of the entry to the actual building. O option two would be to remove the front frame entirely and just retain the greenery here. Um, the separation and this entry. And a third option, which I don't think actually achieves anything more, would be to cut that back to there. Pulling that back to that entry achieves nothing, I say, because of the... May I have a little more time, please? Yeah, one more minute. Okay, yes. thank you. Pulling it back uh, is adjacent to the uh, garage. It doesn't really cause any amenity impact. So turning to the views, you can see that there's quite a considerable view through this area. These are the three options again. There's really no effect on the neighbours' views from this position, which were taken by our architect. And this generous width, if cut back, looks more like that. That means that uh, the neighbours can look through into here and conversely, the residents can look through into there. We felt that the first one was a better alternative. Uh, finally, this, well not finally, but this, almost lastly, this one solid base provides screening of the various things there. Um, there's an opportunity to provide uh, greater transparency to the gate, but keeping it full height means that the baseline is continued right through. And these are the screens, and those are the ones that are solid against the solid brickwork and these are movable. Now if the panel were to agree I have a sample of some of the metal. May I present that? I'm happy to have that. Okay. Yeah. We've said it. I might say we understand this BCA issue with timber <coughs> so you probably don't need to go there. Yes and I just want to show you how tactile that is, yes. and um, the final slide shows various methods of perforation to achieve various measures of transparency. So, if the panel's not of the mind to approve it today in that format, we would seek leave to defer the decision so we could present more thoroughly the reasons to council. Thank you. Any questions? I have a question. Yes. Uh, Bet, wasn't it? Just on the sliding gate, you said you'd be happy to accept a condition on transparency for the sliding gate. Yes. Um, so 50% would be something acceptable? Yes. To the yes. Yep. It, it's more about keeping the height to the underside of the building so that there is a continuous effect to that base. And on the goal of structures, you presented three options. Yes. Did you say which is your preferred option two and option three? Option three was your least preferred. I think. Least preferred. Yes. Least preferred. Could you just flick back through those three options? Yes, too? that was quite helpful. Just, yeah. just on so, that point, do you have? That's Sorry. Option Could, that's option you... three, so that's including cutting back the um, pedestrian entry. And you can see that the neighbour from their uh, little deck area would see more driveway and things like that. Yep. Do, can I ask, do you have hard copies of those? That you're yes, I do, yep. because I thought that would be useful. Thank you. Um, Thank you. And that's, these are the exact slides. We're not sort of giving you anything extra. Um, and that one just maintains the integrity of the concept of a, a frame. It's just the option, it's just without the planting? Yes. Then option two is, yeah, okay. 
And option two is pulling back the frame as well. And with the work button, the death remote Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the only change. Just between that one and that one is just pulling back the frame. And I think the pedestrian entry part is actually quite important. So, because it provides that buffer between the pedestrian way and the driveway. I just have one question. Yes. Basically, to achieve your objective of um, providing a better presentation to the streetscape, we mentioned on site that um, would the applicant be prepared to put in a rainwater tank so we can sustain this new vegetation? I'm sure they would come up with some way of doing it. They... And you wouldn't object to a condition to that effect? No, we would you? No, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Opportunity. That's fine. We move now to item uh, D66, 19, 11 Gordon Avenue in Coogee. Um, again, we have one objector registered, Mr Mark Swain. So, Mr Swain. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Chair, members of the panel. I'm here on behalf of uh, four property owners, the Kazakos family at number 11A, Gordon Avenue, the Owenent family at number 9, Turner family at number 16, and Crookshank family at number 18, mm -hmm. uh, to speak against the, the officer's recommendation. From the outset, the uh, objectors understand the site is entitled to be developed. They have no objection whatsoever to a compliant form of development. <laughs> To that end, they acknowledge the positive inclusions in condition two of the, two of the recommendation uh, in regard to visual and acoustic privacy measures. In its current form, notwithstanding, uh, they have strenuous objections in relation to the overall height of the building, which is non-compliant, uh, and the extent of non-compliance with ancillary controls from the DCP, including uh, building uh, external wall height, uh, southern side boundary setbacks, deep soil permeable areas and uh, building forward of the building line. In fact, there's not a lot that uh, uh, doesn't require some sort of attention in terms of non-compliance from the DCP. Uh, the report argues that the departure is not significant in any individual case. Uh, we would put forward that it is the cumulative effect of the non-compliance uh, which renders this proposal, un proposal unacceptable. It's generally accepted that where you do have a non-compliance, particularly in respect of statutory controls, height or uh, FSR in this case, uh, normally the generous compliance with other controls is what uh, forms part of the justification. Uh, with the original submission, we submitted uh, uh, comments to the effect that the FSR is questionable at best in terms of compliance. Rooms have been renamed plant and machinery uh, to keep it under. There are a number of questionable inclusions in the report. Uh, we would ask that the, the panel be sure uh, that the thing does comply. In terms of the overall building height, the non-compliance is for 50% of the uppermost floor level. Uh, combined with a non-compliant external height, uh, building external wall height uh, and side boundary setbacks. Once again, uh, it's a bit hard. The objectors haven't been party to amended plans uh, for since the 27th of October last year and uh, those that uh, have been reported to this panel. The, the reality is the side boundary setbacks uh, for the uppermost level are a metre out. They're 54% uh, non-compliant uh, in respect of all affected owners to 11A. The uh, non-compliance does result in extra shadowing of kitchen windows where a lot of the time is spent by the family. In terms of view loss, uh, the non-compliance with both building height and uh, side boundary setbacks uh, exacerbates uh, the... I'd like to ask for a little bit extra, if I may. Given you're speaking on behalf of at least four people, certainly. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, the, the overall building height and non-compliance uh, with the side boundary setbacks 
uh, exacerbates uh, overall impacts and certainly affects the view corridors uh, which are depicted in uh, particularly figure eight uh, in relation to number 18 uh, Gordon Avenue. Uh, it happens to be where the, uh, the view towards the existing land and water interface uh, and the tidal wave zone is at its widest and it's clearly impacted adversely by the non-compliant side boundary setback in addition to the uh, overall building height. Yeah. <clears throat> Effectively, uh, a, a lot of the justification in the report is on the basis of unreasonably compromising uh, the design intent in terms of achieving uh, compliance. With the utmost respect, the proposal essentially relates uh, to a proposed first floor uh, of 112 square metres to accommodate three bedrooms. Uh, with respect, there is well and truly opportunity and ability uh, to come up with a more skillful design which would allow for the provision of a compliance setback, uh, which would improve the impacts to all surrounding landowners. Uh, the proposal in itself appears to want to maximise the potential uh, at the expense of all other surrounding owners. There's been 10 submissions uh, lodged in relation to this application and all submissions are concerned solely with the non-compliance. There's evidence in the streetscape by way of applications that have been considered by council in recent years where uh, view corridors have been insisted upon. It's a fairly evident uh, um, inclusion within the streetscape uh, and that is what's being insisted upon here. In terms of the overall ceiling heights, the original proposal or the amended proposal, the last one that was seen by the applicants, included three metre ground floor ceiling height, 2.7 first floor and 450 uh, uh, floor thickness. Uh, once again, with respect, there's, there is plenty of room to move within there to be able to reduce the overall height uh, by at least 500 millimetres without compromising the internal integrity. Okay. Uh, Thank you. So, in summary, uh, we would like to request that we do not believe that the application satisfies the tenacity principle. It does not represent a sufficiently skillful design, can be readily amended uh, to... Uh, take account of the concerns that have been raised without compromising the design intent. So we request that the application be refused in its current form or conditioned uh, to comply with the maximum building height and side boundary setback. Um, um, Thank you. I'll ask, Thank you, to, you. ask yeah. you to wrap up. Is there any questions? One question. Sure. Say that um, <coughs> some of the FSR might have been questionable. I noted in the report that they had included some of those additional areas. Is there anything that you wanted to point out that you might think would be included? Yeah, I believe. Uh, yeah, I would urge the council, uh, the panel, to have a look at. Um, they've made a notation regarding an enclosure, which was pointed out in in our submission. Uh, regarding a kitchen and outdoor barbecue area. It's only a, a relatively small area. Uh, it's, it has a roller door enclosure. Uh, we would suggest that is included. There's a stair internally on the lower ground floor level, which under the current application of Ramwick Council's interpretation would appear to also uh, be need to be included. Um, the interpretation in terms of the roller door for the, the outdoor barbecue area uh, with three walls and a roof and a, and a roller door. Uh, the extrapolation of that interpretation would, uh, you know, for a warehouse with a roller door, um, have it excluded from the definition of floor area. So we think that's a bit of a stretch. Once again, it is simply combined with the fact that it is pushing the limits at every level um, and any inclusion uh, will take it over. Thank you. Thank you. I, I might point out we have inspected the site this morning and saw that area to ourselves. We also inspected two of your clients' properties to assess the view impact. So thank you for that.
just one question which is related to the FSR. You mentioned, though, in your submission that it was rooms were renamed. That's my understanding from the reading of the report. I haven't got um, the, the page number in front of me, but uh, there appears to be some areas, I think it was on the lower ground floor level, which uh, have been clarified or something to that effect. I'm sorry, I don't have the particular page reference. As, uh, as being for plant and mechanical areas. Yeah. Plant and services. Plant, plant and services, services. Yeah. Okay, if there's no further questions, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the next speaker is uh, Mr. Anthony Boscovitz. Mr Chair, thank you. Uh, firstly, I seek leave. I'm a friend of the family. I introduced them to Mr Darrick, who's the planner. He's in court today, so I'm here. Don't appear as a solicitor, nor should I be obliged to suggest I am if I'm here as a friend or a consultant or whatever. But in this case, I do seek leave. I, I ask that i be taken off my time. Secondly, Mr you are here today um, to assist in responding to any questions you have with respect to design. Thank I'll you. be doing all of the speaking. Um, Thank you. With respect to the matters raised by Mr Swain, I do note that he made some comments with respect to how the committee is meant to reflect upon and look at Clause 4.6 and says that the justification for any height or FSR non-compliance, of which we don't concede that there is an FSR compliance, but do concede there's a 4.6 with respect to height, should be that the DCP compliance issue should be taken into consideration. That's clearly not what Clause 4.6 or the accepted principles in the Land Environment Court talk about. They talk about looking at objectives with respect to the matters uh, in the LEP as well as those matters uh, of environmental planning grounds. With respect to the overall height, um, uh, this proposal has been in Council since the 21st of December 2017 and has been reduced in height in a number of ways, both by way of amended plans and then further amended plans so that the proposal is now at the eastern edge, a maximum of 320 millimetres over height. Uh, for clarity, that eastern edge is away from the street and is further down, is caused by topography issues on the land. Uh, the stairway is being brought down by a metre to open up view corridors along the side boundary to allow that, allow view corridors from up above. And I can show you some diagrams uh, if you request, but you've seen all the documents in the... Uh, Council's report. And with respect to Mr Swain's comments about reducing at 500 mils, the applicant has since then reduced the height by a further 300 mils by a combination of the reduction in floor to ceiling heights, uh, reduction in the plan, uh, in the uh, in, in the construction zone of the building so that um, there is a greater area of view. Now we do note in the staff's recommendation and the staff's report that they do consider that the worst case scenario with respect to views, I believe that uh, might be for um, might be for um, number uh, eighteen. Gordon is that it's a moderate view loss. Respectfully, we disagree. We would say that at most it's a minor to moderate view loss. They retain their views of Gordon's Bay, of the Clovelly interface with that water and land interfaces as well, and those views are not caused by the development, not caused by the non-compliance with respect to those controls. Um, there is an impact, it is a minor or small impact. There has been a skillful design attributed. The council's officers have agreed that over the various modifications to this application that have happened over the last almost two years, that the design is now a skillful design that incorporates um, and complies with those objectives in the DCP and uh, with respect to the objectives in FSR and height controls in the LEP. Uh, Mr Swain raised uh, an issue with respect to um, 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 with respect to the fact that this is a skillful design but didn't advise or present any clear alternatives and we say that alternatives have, have been made. I asked for a short uh, addition in time. Um, Mr Swain spoke to an issue that says that the council have seemingly uh, come up with their assessment uh, of the application on the basis that there's no justifiable reason to uh, to reduce areas. In fact, that's that's not quite right. The, the report 
at uh, page uh, 77 only reflects upon um, an issue with respect to the reduction in the building bulk for the lower ground floor and providing a response on paragraph one to say that demolition and relocation of the existing walls on the lower ground level would be unreasonable in this instance and outside the scope of the development application. Uh, they didn't find a justification because that because our client deserves additional space or any space that's outside what would be ordinarily permissible in the LEP. They said that there's no need for an additional setback on the ground floor because it wouldn't be reasonable for them to have to, to redevelop that lower ground level because it's not the subject of this application. So in, in conclusion, Mr Chair, uh, we support the recommendations of the staff. We support the conditions of consent. We have no questions or queries, they've raised issues with respect to visual and acoustic privacy that we accept the condition two and the, con and the condition 12. And if the panel have any questions with respect to other outstanding matters, we're more than happy to answer them. Uh, thank you. Uh, panel members? Uh, yeah. could, could we just start with a clarification? There are photo montages in the officer's report. Um, we just want to know, and we understand there were some recent amendments, including lowering the height yes. over the roof height over the stairwell. What we want clarification on is um, whether those photo montages reflect those changes or not, or they, do some they, of them reflect them and some of them don't, or what? Thank you, Ms. Laidlaw. Um, uh, they do not. So there has been a further three. In fact, for both the solar access considerations and for the view montages, um, they haven't been amended to reflect the further 300 mil reduction with respect to height. Mm -hmm. So they'll actually be, and that, that's reflected in the council officer's report for both, um, for both solar access and view loss, that the height is actually a further 300 mil below mm -hmm. what is um, seen in these montages as being the overall height. So the consideration is, is that there'll be an additional uh, benefit to those who are objecting with respect to the bulk of this building. I think there's also, maybe the architect could, I think, because um, one of the things we're looking at is the, it does seem to be the um, leading or eastern edge of the stairwell and potentially bedroom three that is causing um, some of the view impact. And I understood in looking at the section, it appears you have reduced the height over the stairwell yeah, as well by, as the 300. By, by one metre. By one meter. So, if you were to refer to drawing number um, 502. Sorry? 502, the cross section. Revision. Uh, revision I, which was the 29th of 05. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I see that. Now, I see on that 502, you've reduced the height of the stairwell, and then there appears to be a eave overhang on top of that. Uh, that's not coloured, or is that something in the no, distance? No, no, no. We, we, we step back the structure so that it steps up, um, but the roof over the um, stairwell has been lowered by one metre. And if you look at the elevation, um, DA403, revision N, you can see the area directly above that circulation, vertical circulation space that has been reduced by one metre. Sorry, just, just to be absolutely clear on that cross section, you have, um, there's the coloured element, which is the reduction in height over the stairwell, and then right at the top, that, that element there, can you just explain what that is? Well, we've shown the um, PV Might be collector easy. area. Could you just... Um, Maybe we could come here. Let's take this with you. Rather than what? What is that element there? That's that's the roof beyond. So so the roof over the bedroom hasn't been reduced, but over the stair it has. And then what is that so, there? Hang on, just just to clarify. Yeah. yeah. The roof over the bedroom has been reduced three hundred, has it not? Yeah. But the overall the whole development has been reduced three hundred. Right. So it's and been then reduced three hundred. The area over, over the stair has been reduced further than Okay, but that's seven hundred. Yeah. That there yes. 
That's the roof beyond. Roof of bedroom three? Correct. And then what is this one here? That is that is the roof as well. We put a step in the roof to again reduce the, um, the um, wall height on the boundary. So the structure steps in 400 and then up 450 for the overall roof height. Okay. And then could we go maybe to the view analysis for um, it's figure, number 18? Fig, yeah, figure 8 I think in the report might be useful. So th this is uh, level 1 and the upper level and then that's upper level balcony view so there's two slides There's here. a blow up. There's an enlarged version. Next page. Okay. Yeah. That's from there up. That's from level uh, 1 and then the upper level. And then can you just go to the next? Uh, these are only two for 18. Uh, no, maybe you can keep we're, a different we're, we're looking at figure eight in the report. Figure eight. Oh, figure eight. Sorry. Or figure nine. Or figure nine. Oh, no, hang on. It's figure eight. It is figure eight. Figure eight. Figure eight. Can we add a figure eight? Um, I don't think we'd rub this in this slide. To be honest. Figure eight is from, I believe, 20. 18. 18. Yeah, we don't, this we, is figure 8, this one. So go yeah. back one more. We, so that's, that's 20. So that's 18 there. That's from 18. Yes, we don't have that. Mm. Mm. Okay. But you yeah, don't have that the, one. The, the, architect's, so don't know sorry, the architect's here. He can see figure 8 in the report. The My question, I think, is... is mm -hmm. I'll give you mine. <laughs> the, the, that image doesn't reflect the change you're talking about, either the 300 reduction of the overall roof, um, that, or the, hang that on, let me finish the question, sorry. or the meter reduction over the stairwell. That image reflects the meter reduction over the stairwell, but not the 300 overall reduction in the RL. So what what that seeks to do, Mr. Chair, that that doesn't re that doesn't show the reduction in the overall height of the building, but does show the stair. So what this seeks it's, to do is not, show it's not apparent that there's any difference in the. This, level of well, the roof. If, if it had been showing the step down over the stairwell, shouldn't there be no, a line? No, it's in line then? with here. That's the skylight over the stairwell. Okay. So it would. Oh, so it hides it, it hides it behind. This. Correct. So if, uh, it would okay. extend to there. Mm. Can I just ask you one question then, leading from that? Um, so off this, we have to take three hundred mil. Yes, correct. Um, then looking at the floor plan for bedroom three, on the eastern side is the ensuite and the bathroom. So is there any reason why the roof height over the ensuite and the walk in wardrobe at least could not be reduced um, to? 2.4 metres, for example, or at the, the level of the reduced height over the stairwell? I mean, you would have one section of roof that sort of sank into the general bulk of the building. Um, Nobody would see it. Nobody would see it. It was just... <laughs> Well, the question there. really is, the objective is to... Um, Increase the uh, mm -hmm. or decrease the view loss. So that would so be that yeah, bit. Side. That would then be you'd lose three hundred there, and then you'd lose another bit from cutting that over the bedroom and onto it. Yeah. So, so you're talking about this section right here. Uh, in here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it would make more sense to have that relate to here, so reduce this area over the shadow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Rather than the yeah. entire area, but. You know, then you can at least pick up that and, and just, language. Just but we still need yeah. to achieve, you know, enough head height in there. So, so just ex obviously, yeah. but just exploring another option then. Given that you are still three hundred mils or so above the height limit, and I Not think in this location. No, I understand that, but there is an o an impact yeah. of your impact arising from that, and one way to look at it is a quid pro quo thing where you might get some impact from that, but are reduced impact from that, would it be possible to maintain the parapet around the western edge but also have a lower bulkhead over the bedroom? Well, no, because we've already reduced the floor to, the, um, floor to ceiling height in the bedroom it's to 2.6. Okay. So it's but it could be 2.4 over the bed head, couldn't it? Yeah, but we questioned, we questioned the extent of the 
benefit that would be associated with that. Well, it would see because we've reduced it some. Because it would still be right retaining that. a parapet. Yeah, but round here. Yeah. Yeah, but what would be? And then that would all, that could all go, couldn't it? Or be lowered down. I think you would get a very negligible, you know, difference. The two hundred mil difference would be almost imperceptible. Well, it's already really well for you to say mm. that. But can I just say it would have been uh, appropriate to have photo montages that match the current plans, um, and that we're not having a mishmash of some that yeah. shows some and some that doesn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm. Is it possible to do updating photo montages? Um, I mean, it, it's not impossible, um, member. But but the issue is that we, we accept the, the staff officers' report. We, we did obviously see this, and obviously we saw it in accordance with when it was released, which was last week, and it, it did say that those issues were being perceptible and that it was accepted that a reduction of 300 mil would benefit it, and that for the majority of this, the worst-case scenario is that there's a moderate impact. For two of them, it's a minor impact. For one of them, it's a minor to moderate impact from 71 Beach Street through other buildings. So we accepted the premise from the staff officer's recommendation that it could only be better, so we didn't need to provide. So we provide the worst case scenario and they can only improve. Certainly would have helped if we had devised photo montages. Perhaps if we had more time, we might be able to do it, but in the time that we had, we didn't. Any so just with respect questions? to what Miss Laidlaw asked, as she was asking about view loss, similarly with, um, similarly with the shadow diagrams, um, this doesn't reflect the reduced height, but but as per the staff's, staff's report, we, uh, we, we accept what they've said, which is that there will be a non-compliance with respect to the kitchen window, but the living room windows, which is a requirement in the DCP, get a minimum of three hours solar access to the north-facing living room windows. Um, there is a little bit of inaccuracy with what Mr Swain said, that the family uh, spends, they may spend the majority of their time in the kitchen. That may be the case, but it is an open plan area so spending time in the kitchen would result in them spending time in their living and dining areas as well, which do comply with the requirement of solar access. As you can see here, um, starting at eight, the solar access going through, you're looking at the bottom diagram, that's the amended scheme, obviously. Um, I didn't need to point that out probably. But from eight to nine, the solar to 10, there's still solar going through those first three windows. 11, there's still solar, 12, the third yeah. window starting to become a little bit uh, overshadowed, but it's still there. Uh, and then one o'clock, we start to have a we start to have an impact on that third window. But they st those two living room windows continue to get solar access until um, somewhere between two and three p.m. So the DCP's requirement is that those living room windows, northern facing living room windows, get three hours of solar between eight and four, um, and that's achieved. Um, the only reason I raise that is because it'll, there'll be, a, again, an imperceptible benefit to the owner from the reduction in 300 mils, and that's what the report has said, that it considers to be compliant already, but that 300 mil will assist. Okay, thank you. I think um, we need to... Sorry. Sorry, just one. Just, yeah. so, so the whole living, it's a living, dining, kitchen, all open area. We have to do that. It is. So three of the four windows in that open plan living get compliant solar access. The area through the middle where the council have said if there, even if there was a compliant scheme, they wouldn't get solar access. Yeah. And that, that is a consideration the controls in the DCP where it allows for a variation from the requirement if there's a extenuating circumstance. And we say that yeah, there have been a number I, of amendments. I think we understand the, yeah. the solar thank arguments you, the majority. So thank you for that. Um, if there's no further questions, we do. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I had a question for the architect. Again, for simplicity, if you refer to figure eight in the council report, mm -hmm. that's the same image. That was the montage, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. The, the leading edge, that is the easternmost edge of the roof, shown in, yeah. in that. Yeah. Is that the roof or is that the edge of the pergola over the balcony? That's the edge of the roof. The pergola sits slightly lower so you, than that. So from that angle, you don't see the pergola? No. Okay. So if you look at the uh, long section, 
um, drawing 501, yes. you can see that the pergola sits lower. However, the, with the amending drawing, so just double check that that's still the case. Yeah, there you go, 501 revision I. You can see that the pergola does sit 150 mils lower than the overall RL. And that 150 mils is enough for it to not be visible from from that from that angle from yes. that location. Um, Even from the higher levels of the ground opposite, I would have thought the leading edge still would have been at the bottom. So, for example, from Figure Seven, the higher viewpoint. Figure Seven. I think you can, in, in figure seven, you can see it, just the double line slightly further, but it's very... Very fine. Very fine. You can see there's two lines there, where you yep. can see the leading edge of the pergola from that angle. Okay. Thank you. Any panel members, any further questions? No. no. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that leads us to the next item, which is um, 30 slash 36 McEwen Street in Maroubra. We have Mr Ludwig Fairley um, representing the applicant who has no objectors. That is, there's no objectors registered. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Sorry, please okay. proceed. Thank you. Just, um, uh, thanks, panel. My name is uh, Ludwig Fairley. I'm the owner uh, of the property, and I've got Jason Fletcher from CRD, uh, my architect and design manager. Um, just, uh, I've just been handed out there some photos of the actual place that we're in question. Uh, it's uh, level three, which is on title. Uh, and uh, I guess I've got to state that um, I'm exhausted. It's been 11 months uh, going through five different planning, uh, planning managers. Uh, we actually, you'll see there's actually a letter there from council that we received only a few days ago recommending uh, an approval and just noting down on a variation for floor space. And yet the report actually uh, does not recommend it uh, going on a bit. So I'm really confused. I've got to state that I'm not quite sure what the issues are. Um, but let me start there with the presentation. Uh, and if you've got any technical questions, I've got, as I said, Jason Fletcher. Look, it's been a really drawn out process. Uh, I've tried actually as much as I can to do the right thing and be open and ask for people to visit the site. Jason here has been unbelievably trying, um, trying to get in hold of everybody and just get an idea what the issues are. And the balls get kept rolling. So I've actually spoke to the councillor, Dylan Parker, to investigate why it's taken such a drawn-out process. It's very, very difficult, but we'll move on from that. We are where we are. Now, um, the actual property, I think the question that we have is the impact that it has to the street scheme. I don't... The, the process, and you'll see from those photos there, the, the actual location is very, very secluded. Uh, there's a stairwell. Uh, I mean, if we go here, you'll see... I guess I'm pointing... We, we've been there. You've been there, yes. So basically, um, I guess I'm wondering what the issue is. The height doesn't go any of, what, of what's already there. The FSA is slightly increased, but even if you notice from that photo that I've taken, uh, you'll see there a swing chair. The winds and the extremities that you get up there does not make that area very useful. So the whole purpose of this uh, cabana is just to make it utilise it, to make that lift well useful, and to also... And I guess if we look at the summary of our position, is uh, it doesn't impact. I've had no objections. I've got support from the body corporate. We'll benefit uh, Unit 29 because we're going to put additional soundproofing. Uh, and it's hardly seen from any streetscape, and it doesn't impact on anything. And there's already another building just across from me that's got a whole fifth floor. So I'm really not quite sure what the issue is. And I guess the thing that I would ask of the panel is to actually visit the actual site and see what, what are the issues. 
So as I, I say, we, we, we couldn't get into the property, yes. um, but we have been to the site and viewed it from the surrounding streets. Yes, so basically I guess our position is that it doesn't, you know, it doesn't impact on anyone. Uh, it clearly is, it's not an additional story. All it does is make utilises an area that makes that lift useful. Uh, I don't use it in winter, summer's too hot, it needs a cover. And this seems to be an ideal situation. So I, I guess I, if I could have another minute, if you've got any. Uh, you can yep. have another look. Yes. So I basically I want to say that um, I find that it's something that will be uh, helpful, especially to elderly people, to be able to get up there and to help to my partner as well. And I've been uh, just confounded and confused by approvals and non-approvals and different issues. So I've been chasing a bouncing ball. And I guess I just want some clarity uh, and assistance. I'm willing to work with uh, the panel, uh, with the planners, and I just, we haven't been able to do that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any questions from panel members? How, how do you get from your unit to this space? Okay, so basically that's on title, it's not a common area. Mm -hmm. So I can go, I can either walk into it, I've got a stairwell, which is the one on the... The common uh, fire stair? It's not a, uh, the, it's not a common fire stair. It isn't. That actually mm -hmm. goes into my apartment. Right. Yeah, so um, there's actually, there's a stairwell and there's a lift well. So, so to get, uh, to utilise that stairwell, you have to enter your apartment but, on the correct. lower floor. So that's the stairwell that you can see on the right. Yes. On the top. You cannot go in there unless you actually are in that tenancy. So you've got to be an owner tenancy. or you've got to be a tenant. So that is not available to anybody else. It's on title. And the lift doesn't give access to the the, only to the unit 30 owner, which is me. So mm -hmm. I've got a fob that only allows me, no one else. That uh, lift well, uh, the lift uh, area, lift foyer, is on title as well. So basically mm -hmm. nobody goes up there unless they need to service the air conditioners or something like that. So what facilities are up there at the moment? Uh, the toilet and the and, sinker? No, that's what's proposed. You... At the mm -hmm. moment it's just a tap. It's all that's out there. You'll see from that photo that I saw you in that drawing, that's all that's there. There's some plastic grass. There's no, uh, there's no shelter at all. Uh, it gets very hot out there. And obviously when the wind blows and it rainbows. So that lift is hardly utilised as well. So the whole purpose of this cabana is to make that area more useful. It doesn't impact on anybody. Nobody can really see it. Uh, it it'll help the unit 29 because obviously it'll give some soundproofing. And it will just make the whole area just more useful than what it is. It's lovely to have, but at the moment it is not utilised. The cabana is enclosed in glass. That's a glass facade along the front of the cabana. Yes, but that's opening glass, so it can actually be like a cover. So it opens all up. And that was the purpose of it. I want to actually get some air. I want to use it. Uh, I, don't want it, I don't want it to be a room. I want it to be a useful area that can be used for barbecues and everything else. Is there any questions of my architect here? He's, he's, he's work, made unbelievable work, uh, even uh, more than his tenure, to come up with all this information. We've only had two days to prepare this after waiting 11 months to actually get some feedback. Unless you can see from that letter you've got a recommendation, so I'm not quite sure where council's coming from on all this. Okay, so any further questions, panel members, for the architect or...? I was just inquiring, it is attached to your title, this one. Do you know when it was attached to your title as opposed to being communal for the block? The only time it was ever communal was in the proposed developments and sketches. After that, it's always been on title. Uh, so basically, I've got it here that doesn't need to be in that area. So it was the first strata plan that showed it as belonging to that unit? Yes, correct. Uh, there is a feature. Even though, it was, even though it was approved as a communal area? No, it was a, sure it was a was modification. Approved, I think by Section 96 application, it was immediately moved before the strata plan was commissioned into uh, exclusive property for uh, what was in the third And there's a confusion. The council's records are incorrect. I take it lot 25 also has private open space um, 
at that level. At, at the level immediately below this. And it's the corner apartment, is that correct? One of the confusing aspects we found with um, Josephine's comment in the report, and I know that she's only just taken over the portfolio, is uh, her recommendation for a refusal on the basis that it appears as a fifth level. From the only place you can see, as, you, as you've noticed if you're on the ground, the only place you can see this cabana is from the roof of the building itself, and you'll see a very small sliver of, of new construction nestled in between the parapet for the stair and the parapet for the lift. Uh, because this is a, around an eighth of the overall building roof structure. And we're talking about extending from 1800 up to a usable uh, ceiling height internal. And believe, still believe that there is a much more beautiful and uh, effective design to have those two parapets joined up so that you don't end up with a higgledy-piggledy kind of a line at that end because the roof at the rear comes up 1800 and we're talking about increasing that by 1.2 metres to, to join those two up so that in the third of the building you can see if you've got a drone or if you're in a helicopter you would see the glass front of the cabana that moves between the staircase on title and the lift lobby on title and with a, with a usable space. Um, we, you notice in the, in the report that we had, um, I met with Josephine and Tony from council and the only issue they raised was the, amount, the, uh, the case of usage as, a, as an alternate dwelling or secondary dwelling. Um, and, and we offered to remove the sink or, or do other things which are necessary from the council's point of view. And you can see from our uh, summary report, we could reduce the ceiling so that that um, articulation of st stair parapet down to roof up to lift parapet down to secondary roof uh, is still possible and would still give us the coverage that that Lewis is looking for and also make it usable and join those two pieces of untitled lobby, i.e. stair lobby and lift lobby, together with um, this uh, covered cabana. Did, did you, I mean, like, one of your objectives is to get some shade or cover. I mean, did you just look at the option of just doing... I mean, one of the problems you have is you do have an exceedance of the FSR as well as the height and the objectives of those controls go to visual bulk and I mean we did see with you move further down the street you see more of it um, um did you look at maybe just doing a simple pergola maybe the reduced height can I answer that yeah. yeah the problem with that is that you've got a lift and you're not utilizing it because in wet weather <coughs> when it's windy when it's cold you can't go out there and it's just too cold why you catch a lift from your car and you go up and you're exposed so there's not much point in having just an awning cover when you've got to walk to the stairs to get across. But you have got, I mean, you're the unit below, and that has got an almost, uh, yes. a, a, a quite a large balcony with operable screens. But when the lift, there, the lift uh, when the lift comes on level two, or, uh, mm. it, you have to walk across on the common area. So this, this is the only area that actually comes into my property, to, that I can actually go from the bottom straight up into it and walk across it. I'm not, you sorry, you're losing me a little bit, I must yeah. admit. <laughs> yeah. Um, you've, you've got the balcony next to the living area of your flat apartment. On the bottom level? Sorry? On your yes, bottom yeah. level, yes. On the room. Yeah, the living room's got a balcony area, yes. Yeah. Yeah, as, if you look at um, and then what, what, that, that, that level there on that corner, that's level two, so that's the balcony which opens up. At the top level? Yes, correct. Yeah. So what, what were you saying about you can't, there's no lift that goes into that floor. Your so floor? Yeah. So the level, that lift goes into a common area on level two. So the front Which door. Which is level one to uh, the level, level below you. Level two is the top you. floor. So, so the, level, the lift only goes to the level below you. Um, the lift goes, the strange thing, so you catch the lift yeah. on the ground floor from the foyer. You go to level two and you get out and you walk across the common area and then you go through my front door. Yes. 
yes. but if I go up to level three, it goes straight into my property. Oh, the yes, same way. Yes. Like yeah. every other unit. Yes. yes, but no other unit can go up to level three. So I'm the only one. But is it really such an impediment that um, you'd, go, you'd go up to your roof before you then walk down into your unit? Is it an impediment? It just gives you the option, I think. Mm, That's but, the thing. but just getting back to Miss Laidlaw's question, which was a pergola there would provide you with some um, shadow, uh, uh, um, sorry, sun protection to a certain extent, although a pergola by definition has no roof, um, and it would not constitute uh, a floor as such. It's more like a rooftop facility which is often common on residential flat buildings, but not enclosed areas with um, other ancillary features to it. And given that your unit does have a, a very good uh, balcony on the front, uh, I would have thought that you'd be using it mainly during the good weather times, the well, upstairs. You, yes, you can use it in the good weather times, but I think the view and the location and the air, you get it there on that, on that level, level three. So the reason for the enclosement is that you get better utilisation of that area. It is a big area. Uh, there's still plenty of other area, but I think it just gives you the enclosement that if it is cold, you can actually use it, because otherwise you, you can't. It's, it gets, it's uh, been that close to the sea, unfortunately, it's got its benefits and non-benefits. The, um, there's no pool or anything up on the No, roof. no, there's no common areas. Why would you need a shower? Shower? Oh, do you, there's a tap there that you can use the showers when you go surfing. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. yeah. In, the oh, in the proposal, why would there be a shower there? Mm. It just would make if you're coming from the surf, you could just water down there. Because unfortunately, you, the, you, 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 presumably you've got showers and bathrooms, etc. Yes, but they're apartment. on level one. They're two floors down. No, I, I presume you've got one in your apartment. Yes, there's two. There's two uh, toilets, but they're on the bottom level. They're not on the level two. So you've got to go down the stairs, two floors down, to have a shower and walk through basically the uh, bedrooms. Your apartment is two floors below this? Uh, yes, so it's three floors altogether, sorry. Yep. I think the, con the confusion is it's a split level apartment. So the, the actual entry is on the first floor. It's a two then you walk apartment. up, up okay. to a level which is not available on the, at the lift yeah. and then you go up a further level to the... And if you're coming back from the beach to go up to the roof, you go straight in with your sand, etc., etc. You can have a shower. We offered already to the council officers to remove the bathroom if that was an issue. Um, it makes the amenity better, but it isn't something to die in a ditch for, um, because it's it is an amazing and unique uh, facility uh, in this area. And if you look across at 178 180 uh, Marine Parade, they've got a building that actually does have a real fifth floor. Uh, that aligns with yep. all of our balconies and floors. Yeah, there's, there's some history for that. We, yeah, I realise. So, and, and we're stepped back a couple of metres from that uh, line of building. But for, from from what's been said so far, one can get in the lift and go straight to this floor without having to go through the rest Directly of Directly from the main lobby, okay. exactly. Okay. Thank you. The difficulty is it does constitute another level, whereas if you had a pergola and a roof terrace facility, that would not constitute a level as such. It's capable of being used as a dwelling. That's right. There's also a kitchenette and there's a bathroom. There's no kitchenette. It's a, it's a, there's a sink, a, like, a, like well, a bar, perhaps. And a, and a microwave. Um, and we offered to remove that as well. I mean, okay. this is not the issue. Um, okay. We can achieve the same utility with, a, with the... With, like an exterior kitchen attached to a, a barbecue, and we're quite comfortable with that. Um, right. It really is about the usability of it from the point of view of worsening weather and such an amazing place with great views up there. Yeah. But are, there is... are there no views from the unit itself? There's I would have thought th you would have been afforded views from your unit. There is, a, there is views there from the level two, but the views from level three are better and the area is better to... To do all. I think um, the thing that you've got to consider too is I've got elderly parents and one of the things that when they, they came when I bought the place they needed to go down two floors to go to the toilet so that seemed to me seemed well that's not great uh, if there's a provision that we can make something like this and that's why I asked Jason to consider it mm. to have a shower yes so you can wash down because I've, I've been there I've lifted you know you go down you get up there 
you wash through, you've got to walk down two floors and wet everything. Okay. Thank you. But um, that's just when you're coming back from the <coughs> beach. But for everyday use, there's uh, the shower is in the unit on the what is your first level, then your second level, I presume, has a living. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, there's no question. There's, still, yeah. there's bathroom facilities in your apartment. Yes, <laughs> I would have thought so. Okay, um, the recommendation, as you know, and despite the letter, which I acknowledge is somewhat confusing, recommendation is not to approve it. And, of course, we don't, therefore, have conditions before us at the moment, if we were of a mind to do so. Um, I'm just seeking clarification on what you're asking. Are you, are you asking it to be deferred? I prefer to I, I actually feel that uh, we've been, um, like I said, it's been 11 months. We've worked really hard. We've tried to meet that. with them. Uh, the last meeting that we had, they gave us the view that it was okay, and you see the letter there that's recommending it. So I'm just really confused about this report. I understand that, through. but I'm asking what you're asking us to do in those circumstances. In these circumstances, I know that you have the ability and the uh, power to actually approve this regardless of the recommendation and that is what we would like. Um, if, in your view, in, in the committee uh, or the panel believes that it's better to refer it back to council for further consideration and, and conditioning, uh, that would be acceptable. And we, we significantly disagree, actually, that it is a fifth floor. Um, and because of it, it, it it's uh, a very small proportion of the overall building, etc., but I see your I, I see your uh, technicality of the point. Um, With, I mean, there's another technical issue, I guess, in that uh, um, there hasn't been a 4.6 to do with the height variations. There has been. I think uh, she sorry, there has been. she disagreed that. Um, she Sorry, disagreed that, with our that, assessment that, that it was in the public interest yeah. and it was unnecessary and unreasonable oh, right. not to approve it. The height, okay. the height already right. exists. It's been approved over height no, no, in 2002. That. Yeah. It was a technical issue. Yeah. That. No, it's, no, it's merely a technical issue. She disagrees that with, the, um, with our argument in the 4.6 request. Because yeah. one of our considerations is the necessity for it and given the plans provide for those facilities that we've just that have just been identified, uh, as I said, if, if it was purely a pergola type structure for uh, use of the roof in a better climatic condition, uh, but what we've got before us in these plans is something more. As you said, a, a pergola gives you no actual uh, weather protection. It's got doesn't have a roof. And I think even when Tony Rastevsky, who was the planner before Josephine took over, he was also he is now Josephine's coordinator, I believe. And our meeting, which finally had after ten months of trying to find a, a a planning meeting, he acknowledged that there was nothing in our proposal that couldn't be handled simply by council condition, um, which we found very awkward then and hor um and disappointing that instead of making condition or even asking for us to make amended plans like they did with the previous um, DA, that they just came back with the two recommending approval and then re recommending refusal. Well, I suppose my question is, and, and I do appreciate and understand the frustrations that applicants go through, mm. uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, when I say a pergola, well, you might be able to have something which had some awning over a portion of it, but for all intents and purposes, it was an ancillary part to uh, the dwelling in terms of functioning as a rooftop um, facility. Yeah. So um, I suppose that's the issue at the end of the day as well that we must consider. And um, and I, we're, we're really asking you... Uh, have you considered amending the plans to provide for, rather than a self-contained self-contained type of room, a um, facility that re really does operate in conjunction with the unit per se? We offered um, to make whatever plan changes were required or they could, might reasonably ask for. Um, ever since Jaden, who took over in February, um, and I think one of the 
most disappointing parts of this whole thing is they've never, none of them have been willing to actually sit down and have a conversation about what was the crux of the issue. And it was literally last second that this fifth level uh, interpretation came. Uh, we discussed the um, usage, etc., but we've been offering to make changes as required. It is a difficult location to best use um, uh, if you if you can't use the lift. Sorry, in the um, in particularly rainy weather or particularly inclement weather, uh, it's it's difficult. Well, There's, okay. There's four. Yeah, I think, I think we've yes. Okay. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Thank you. Um, so, thank you. Sorry, I'm sorry. I just want to be clear. What? Where does that leave it at? Um, because I'm not quite we, clear. We will now. Yeah. Um, after hearing all of the speakers, yes. we'll adjourn and deliberate on the matter, and we'll your, our decision will be advised on the website. Okay. Uh, and so, uh, thank do you. I have uh, any comeback on that? Because I, yes. The decisions yes. effectively the same as the decision of the council. So there's rights of appeal that arise against that decision. But, there's but rights before you need review. to go to appeal, you can do a, a review that's of right. the development application and that's called what we call a section 8.2. They did change the number. And, no, 8.2A. 8.2A, review of the application. Or it, may so, be, or it may be that the matter is simply deferred and giving you the opportunity. So it depends yeah. upon the decision, but certainly yeah. there's rights And that, yeah. that allows you not to go through the whole process again and it doesn't require you to go to court. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing I can ask is uh, I've been really willing to work with council. I've sent emails, I've called, no one's ever called me back. I only got two emails saying that things have been deferred. I do feel it's been quite unjust. And like I said, I'm taking a case up with the planning director because I do feel that I was never given the opportunity to discuss this. Yep. And Jason's gone way and above to try to work with us. Yep. And this has just come out of the blue two yep. days before we've been here. Okay, so, thank you. I mean, we, we hear what you say. That's not something we can deal with. We're an independent panel. Um, and we're, I, I like you, dealing with the matter as it is before us today. But we hear what you say. So okay, thank, you. thank you. Can I now move to the last item on the agenda, which is... Uh, 252, 254 Maroubra Road, Maroubra, and uh, yes, um, <laughs> so we have Mr Anthony Betros um, or Mr Andrew Schultz to address us and Sarah Kelly has vacated the room. Thank, thank you panel, um, just like you to support the recommendation for approval please. Um, as you can see uh, this uh, modification has arisen from uh, no fault of the applicant who had the sewer surveyed at the time of the DA. Um, come the CC stage with Sydney Water being involved, there was a different survey sewer level and that has necessitated an increase of the basement above that sewer level. Um, the, in the distance required to move from that sewer is actually greater than the increase that we're seeking, but we've compressed the uh, floor to ceiling heights to, to minimise that overall increase to 200 millimetres. Um, as you would have seen from the diagrams in the report, um, that increase does not um, uh, have any uh, adverse effects on the shadowing or solar access to neighbouring properties and also the visual bulk still reads as intended by the controls. That being two to three storeys at the northern end and three to four storeys at the southern end. Happy to answer any questions, thank you. And it relates not to the height issue, which, uh, as I understand, is the major issue. I'm just curious why we suddenly have a fire egress stair at the end of the basement that wasn't there in the DA, um, and that's eating into... Well, it's creating a zero setback at basement level for a start, and it's, of course, eating into the deep soil area. Yeah, it was Compliance with Why does that suddenly become necessary? I might just defer to the architects on that, but as I understand, there's a standard condition of our BCA compliance, um, and we could have done that by a condition to comply with the BCA, but we've put it as part of this modification. Um, Why wasn't it obvious at the initial DA stage that that would be necessary, or was there is there consideration for alternate design solutions? Under uh, the BCA? As I understand, there is with um, egress distances uh, in basements. Um, I'm but, happy to hear from the architect. Yeah, I might do that, otherwise I'll just be um, <laughs> labouring the point.
Yes, so, so the... Sorry, your name is? That's Andrew Schultz. Oh, oh sorry. Andrew. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, so we received, um, as a, through a PCA report, our fire engineer gave us uh, an alternate solution for a, for that stair to come through. And as part of the application, we've also put in a... Uh, sorry, so just to clarify, the alternate solution was at the DA stage where you didn't have the stair? No, no, it was at CC stage when we, we started developing CC drawings. So why wouldn't it have been obvious that you need a stair to meet BCA at the DA stage? Uh, there was, as part of it, we were given, a, a, we had to put a roller shutter in, which was part of this package here. So then that basically, with the need for the roller shutter to get, compart, get the, the compartmentation of, that, of the basement, basement um, it was deemed that we had one stair at one end and one stair at another end, which would then exceed the, the 20 metre maximum. So... So, so, here, they, so if they it are wasn't for the... Stair, uh, a second fire stair in at the okay. rear of the property. And it wasn't envisaged you would need to have separate compartments? No, at DA, at we, DA. we had two fire, um, two fire egress points and that was within yeah, 20 metres to a point and then 40 metres to the distance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's not something that we, we yeah, wanted to put in at that stage, but it's something that, that we've been asked to put in by our consultants. Yeah. Thank you. Any... Questions arising? No. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you to all those that remain. Um, we might just invite Sarah back in for to close the meeting. So, th thanks, Sarah. Um, <laughs> and we've now heard from all of the registered speakers. So, in accordance with the panel guidelines. A public meeting will now be closed and the panel will move to another room, in fact, and deliberate and vote on the matter. Um, we won't return today to announce our determinations. The outcomes from voting will be made available through the Council's website, um, potentially late tonight um, or tomorrow, and an audio recording of the meeting will also be made available through the Council's website. So the time being 25 past two, I declare the meeting closed and thank you all for your attendance and my colleagues for their assistance so far.